Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Collection Conundrum. Uh, we've got a really special guest today. Aaron Dunlop is going to be checking in and we're going to have some fun. We're going to play some games and we want to get everybody in the chat. Looks like we've got some of our regulars here. Good to see Papa Gritch, uh, Nick, uh, Nello, Mr. Shinobi, Island Terror, and it looks like Michael also here. So good to see all you guys. Uh, let me know in the chat where you guys are watching from, what you're wearing, and we're going to be getting your participation uh, more and more here. But before we get into it, let me have Shane come in here and tell us what's going on with this show. And you meant what you're wearing on your wrist, right? We don't want to yeah, know anywhere else than that. Yeah, that's just the wrist is fine. <laughs> anyway, I'm Shane from Relative Time. And if you haven't joined us before, you're probably wondering, you know, what is this whole thing? Well, basically, we invite a guest to join us and we ask them to bring along five watches that they own to form a collection around a specific theme. Then the game revolves around that five watch collection and how well do we know the person that brought it? Now, the game is mostly played between us three hosts, but we want you guys at, watching at home to join in with us. So you guys will be playing collectively against the three of us. Now, there are actually three different phases of the game. We have the collection phase, the question phase, and finally the, the final conundrum, the trade-off phase. And I'll explain more into more detail as we get into each phase. But as you'd expect, points will be generated and given out, and we'll get to know the guest a little bit better. Now, one thing to know with the conundrum is that it's not so much about who wins the game as much about who loses the game, as there's always some sort of minorly embarrassing punishment that goes along with that. And if you guys watching at home win, that means the three of us lose. So without further ado, we'll turn it over to Alden and we can get started. Well, I had so much fun at our last collection conundrum as we had Jody with us, and that was a real treat for me. But I'm equally as excited because today we have on the show Aaron Dunlap. He has a fantastic channel. He's also on, on YouTube. He's also on Instagram. He's been doing this for about five years. So would you please welcome my man, Aaron. Welcome, Aaron. Hey, thanks. OFD checking in here. How are you guys doing? Excited to be here. Fantastic. Hey, uh, right off the bat, if anyone doesn't know what OFD stands for. <laughs> Could you, knowing this might be a PG-13 show, help us understand why it's the OFD channel, not the Aaron Dunlap channel? Um, yeah, that, that uh, phrase actually came about when I was in college from a roommate. And um, it was just one of those things where I was known to do certain things that probably shouldn't be doing. Um, and it was, he would always say, only Flip and Dunlap, but it wasn't Flip and Dunlap. And uh, <laughs> so when I actually, yeah, when I started the channel, I told him, he said, hey, you should call it the OFD channel because you're the one silly enough to start doing this. So, yeah. So, so you're the. Thanks for keeping a PG here. Exactly. Yeah, I will. You're Probably. the. In, in Canada, we have a saying, hold my beer. So you're that guy, right? Hold my beer. Watch this. Let her right? rip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the past, I'm uh, way past that now in my elder years. So, <laughs> <laughs> elderly, elder years. Come on, man. Yeah. So. Hey, uh, what we like to do, Aaron, is get to know our guests a little bit. Um, you know, you talk a lot about watches. So we know your opinion about watches, but we don't know a lot about the man himself. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Maybe where you grew up, what you do for a living, that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm kind of boring as far as where I live. I grew up in Central California and I still live in Central California, um, right in the heart of it. Um, it's hot, it's like 100 degrees here now. So, um, but as far as work goes, I work, uh, I, I'm a certified arborist and a utility specialist and I'm tree risk assessment qualified. So I do a lot of tree inspections for utilities throughout the state. And I work for a company that's involved in uh, quality control for that. So I've been doing that for, um, about 18 years now, so it's, it's been a minute. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. And I get, a, I get to see a lot of the state of California, which is pretty big, so. That's pretty cool. Do you travel for that job at all? I do, I, I travel down to Southern California quite often and um, I'm a big uh, baseball fan. I love the Los Angeles Dodgers. So that makes it nice, nice. for me to get, <laughs> get down to Southern California quite often. Um, actually, I've been to two live games already this year, which was great. Um, but yeah, I, I get to travel and see a lot of the state that um, it, it's just exciting because 
in this line of work with some of my my uh, groups and crews that I have out there, they tell me the same thing. They say I get to see new stuff every day, and it's exciting. So yeah. really, been nervous it. with you living in Fresno. I thought maybe you drifted up to Giants territory, but. <laughs> no, no. Even though it's been a devastating last few games, uh, but yeah. we won't talk about that. We won't talk about that. What's your uh, favorite part of the state as you've been all around it? You know, I am. I'm a tree guy, and so I'm a huge fan of the national forests. Um, mm. Where I am here in Central California, I'm within um, a two and a half hours to Yosemite. Um, I've got Sequoia Kings Canyon just in my backyard, 45 minutes to an hour away. Mm. And, uh, you know, I love that. But I also, I'm close enough to the beach that a couple hours the other direction, you're at the central coast. So it's, there's so much diversity in the state, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mountain guy at heart, honestly. Okay. Love the hills. So, Do you have any hobbies besides watch collecting? Uh, I've, I've got a lot of hobbies. I mean, I'm a homeowner, and so a lot of my hobbies involve DIY, work around the house, doing things like that. But um, I also like mountain biking, and that's something I've recently really kind of started getting back into quite a bit. And it's taking quite a bit of time, actually, but it's good, um, healthy. I think with us starting to come out of the COVID, we all just want to get out and do things outside and get out there. So it's been really exciting doing that. So, But I love watches. That's, my <laughs> that's at the heart and soul of my passions, honestly. So you you said earlier that your family was into watches, maybe not collectors like you, but is that where you, you developed your love from your, your family? Yeah. Um, so my grandfather, he was not in the military, but he worked uh, for the Air Force under contract, and he was a mechanic. And um, he traveled overseas quite a bit, and my he would bring back watches for my father and my uncle. And so um, as those would kind of come off their wrist or whatnot, um, they would get passed down to the cousins or the nephews in the family. And I actually, my uncle, who was a naval pilot, passed me down a, um, a Pogue variant, but I don't, to be honest, remember which one because the only thing I knew was that it says 70 meters and my cousin's watch at 150 meters. And I wanted the one that said 150 meters on it. It was like a, a dive watch thing back then, but that kind of got the whole the ball rolling, you know, and, um, my dad ended up picking up a, uh, a GMT, a Pepsi GMT in 1982. And I was with him when I bought, when he bought that. And it was, it was a neat experience, you know, for, um, he paid $800 for it, which at the time was a lot of money. I mean, it's still a lot of money these days, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so that, you know, and it's, it's been in my blood ever since. Um, I saved up to buy my first watch in 1982. You know, I spent a summer washing cars, mowing people's lawns and everything like that because I knew what I wanted. And, you know, that that's <laughs> it's been around for a while. What was that watch? Um, it's uh, I don't know if I should tell you. <laughs> but it's, OK, OK, yeah. you shouldn't tell us, let's leave it there. No yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I should tell you right now, but OK, that's good enough. Good enough. Are you into uh, any any movie series or book series, anything like that? Um, you know, I love all the Marvel stuff. I'm into the Marvel movies recently, the newer stuff, but I'm also into a lot of the classic stuff. I'm I'm I hate to say it, but from the John Hughes era, so I'm <laughs> you know if, if Pretty in Pink or Sixteen Candles is on, I could watch that too. So, <laughs> and I and I live in a house full of girls. I have two daughters and and stuff like that. So it's kind of the way it works out, anyways. Yeah. 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 What made you jump down the YouTube rabbit hole originally? You know, that is a, that is a good question because um, before I started my YouTube channel, um, I literally had no social media footprint at all whatsoever. It was one of those things that I was like, I'll never, I'll never get into that. I'll never have anything. But um, like a lot of us all did, I was coming home and at that time I actually got my first smart TV and I could pop YouTube right up on my TV and start scrolling through watch videos. And I just started watching them nonstop. And you know, the, the, the big ones now today that we all know, and, um, just got hooked into it. And I was telling Alton earlier, um, my wife's cousin is actually uh, Marshall Time, who has a channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was perusing YouTube and came across his channel. And he hadn't even told me he had it. And we see each other every few days. And so uh, when, once he had it, I was like, OK, I'm game. Let's, let's, let's play along. So it's been, it's been fun. It's been really, really fun and exciting to, 
to get into it. But yeah, um, it's been, you know, my family laughs. They're like, you didn't want to have anything to do with social media. And now you're out there, you know, doing this stuff with my face and videos and <laughs> Instagram and, yeah. and, you know, but, um, yeah, now you're a big deal. You're yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of how it started. You know, just we got, uh, rock the watch is asking, are you a history buff? He's noticing that surrender document they always have in the background, which I saw that too. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, I am. I'm not a hardcore history buff. I'm not. I'm not going to be a doctor. Um, I'm not the doctor of history like you guys recently had on, but I, I am. <laughs> um, but you know, that's that's. It, it's interesting. The instrument of surrender is more tied to a family story and why I use that as a background. And um, it just kind of it started happening. And uh, I know I get a lot of questions about it. And I always try to tell people, you know, here's here's the background on that, and it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. So, yeah, I always found that interesting because my grandma is Japanese, so she went through the war on the Okinawa side, and then sure. came to the states afterwards. That's how she met my grandpa, kind of in connection with that. Sure. Uh, yeah, so it's part of my family history too. Um, and I mean, do you do you do you have you guys do you guys know why I have that, or if you? Read yeah, I asked you once, and I think you said it was a gift from someone. Yeah, my um. So my my wife's grandfather, who just had his 99th birthday, um, he was um, in World War II. He was a linguist and transcriber uh, stationed in India, but um, did his tour. And when he came back, he he did a lot of work for the Legion of Valor Museum um, locally and spent 25 years there helping as a volunteer and whatnot. And so when he um, retired from that um, that volunteer position, they gave him that um, that uh, laminated article of Aaron Sermon of Surrender. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when he moved out of his home, um, the family threw it in a pile to get thrown out. And I just thought, wow, it's just too neat of a thing yeah. to just yeah. get thrown in the garbage can. And so I know it's, it can be controversial. Like, well, I don't know if it really is. It's just a, a piece of history really. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. so that's really what it's all about. Yeah. You know? So, All right, I think it's time to get into it a little bit more, get into the watches. All right, let's see what uh, what we've got going. So, yeah, so Shane, you want to introduce our next segment? Okay, so up first is the collection phase, and this is where we're going to finally see what Aaron brought. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to try to guess at what he brought. Uh, before the show, the three of us were told the theme and the general price range of the collection. And from that, we basically just scoured his YouTube and Instagram and tried to make some guesses. Mm -hmm. Now, he's bringing five watches, but we're only going to try to guess three. And for each watch that we guess correctly, we get a point. But you guys watching at home, make sure you make some guesses as well. Like I said, you guys are playing against all of us. All right. So, so now, as, uh, as you guys are guessing in the chat, I'm going to try and highlight the ones that come up, and we'll see uh, which ones are the most popular and <clears throat> lock your guys' guesses in. Um, Aaron, if you can do me a favor, if you look at sure. the bottom of the screen, you'll see little chat bubbles popping up. Yes. And that is going to have um, watch guesses. So if you if someone gets one right, just kind of keep okay. track of how many the chat gets right. And okay. tell me afterwards, we'll add that to their score, make it a little bit easy for me to keep track of what's going on. Um, but Aaron's collection, it's his five favorite watches. And the tier for this is in the high end range. So Total value of all five watches is between four thousand and ten thousand. Give you guys some clues, and we'll get into it. So uh, I think I'm going to pull up some of our guesses, but let me grab. Let me see who's I got lined up first here. Uh, okay. All right. Looks like I've got mine first. Okay, okay. So here's my three guesses, and here's what I went with. So I saw this one popping up a lot. I thought it was just such a cool kind of panda chronograph. Uh, and I thought, you know, you, you have a lot of Tudor or a couple of Tudor watches coming up a lot. I was hoping one of those two. So I actually picked this one as your Black Bay 41. Um, also getting that one in there. Um, so hoping that that's one of them. And then recently you just added this Glycine Airman, which is one of my favorite watches. One I've really been trying to track down and get a hold of. So I went with those three. Uh, I know a lot of times new watches for me kind of have this honeymoon phase and shoot to the top of my list. So I was hoping it was there. Sure. So those are my three picks. And uh, let me bring up Alden's now. And I guess I'll just put them up in the order that you gave them. You can tell me why you picked them all. Okay. So I saw this one. And 
It, sometimes it's hard to know if it's something maybe you've got in for review or for something that you own, but I saw it a few times and, and I'm absolutely in love with this watch and I like it and I think you like it. So I picked that one. And the next one, same as Dave. I think you wore it on a, as your first wrist shot in the new year. So I thought, you know what? He must really like this watch if he's starting a new year with it. So that's why I picked that Tudor. And, and the, the third obvious would be the Black Bay, but I didn't pick the Black Bay. I picked the Seiko Arnie Patty because looking through Instagram, there was a ton of that on there. So I thought, I bet you that's the kind of watch he's had for a while that he slaps on whenever he's going to go mountain biking or hiking or whatever it is, something rough and tumble. So those are my three picks. Okay. All right. All right. Let's, uh, sure. let's bring Shane's screen up here and see what he's got for us. Right. Evidently, we all think way too much alike because <laughs> yeah, Black Bay 41 was the first one. Um, second one, I think this is... I think the very first watch you ever got. I think you remember saying something about that. So I'm guessing there's a lot of sentimental value and it just seemed like a good one to pick. And lastly, um, same one Alton had, um, seen this a lot on your Instagram. It's like all over the place there. So I figured you got to like it a lot and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So those are my three picks. Good stuff. You guys are all over there. That looks good. Yeah, right. It looks like did anything chat, pop up in the chat that you one, noticed? Yeah, yeah, uh, the Rolex and the Glycine Airman. Was, that, those are the two that I noticed that popped the up. Two chat guesses that came up. And uh, do you want to know if one of those is right? Oh, we got uh, one. In a second. Well, well, you, sure. not yet. Just as yeah. you share your, well, yeah, you can tell tell us the number that they got right. So we got a couple more guessing. So someone's guessing a Breitling. Um, Papa Gritch saying the Rolex. The two guesses for the Rolex. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Grolex and Glycine Airman, a couple of those. So yeah, just tell me how many of the chat got right is good enough for now. Um, so far, there are three, correct? The chat got three of them right. Correct. Well, there's three. I, I, I should say there's three correct answers. Okay, all together. But how about just for the chat? So the chat so there's far one, has guessed the Brightling, the Rolex, the Glycine. Correct. Looks like. So they got one, one point? Yes. Okay. Chat's got one point. We'll see what, what they got. So let me go ahead and pull up the ones that you sent me. And add that. Okay. So that's still on. Okay. So yeah, we'll turn it over to you now, uh, Aaron, and you can walk us through your picks and tell us a little bit about each one, why you picked them, that okay. kind of stuff. And then we'll go from there. But let me pull up the first one. Uh, I'm not sure which order these are going to come up in. So maybe you can just follow me. And here's this one. Okay, so yeah, that's the uh, the Orient Mako 2, I believe, with the um, F69-22 movement in it. Um, I love these watches just for the pure value that they offer. Um, I think you're getting into like a $150 watch about nowadays that you can get these for, sometimes even less on sale. And when I first started getting back into uh, wanting another automatic watch, um, the Orient brand popped up and it was a brand I'd seen years and years before and never really thought much of. And so I started reading about them and just kind of fell in love with the brand and thought, you know, that's something I definitely want. And um, this one actually was given to me as a gift by my wife. And so um, love the watch. I think, like I said, they have so much to offer. You can modify them. You can put, you know, um, sapphire crystals in them. But um, just you really can't go wrong with an Orient diver, in my opinion. So no. has this one has this one been modded at all other than the strap? No. Uh, and by the way, I saw Chris Walls is on here. This is uh, 86 Leather Co. that Chris sent me for the channel, which thank you, Chris. I really, really appreciate it. But no, on this one, it's completely stock. I do have a, um, I think it's the Kano, the bigger one. And I did put a sapphire crystal in that one, which was the, was the first time I'd done a uh, sapphire crystal on a watch. So that was kind of exciting. But yeah, this one just... Like I said, it, it's a beautiful little watch. I'm a Dodgers fan. It's got the perfect color yeah, blue right. on it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're great uh, watches for the money. Um, the Rays, uh, any of them, you really can't go wrong. All right, number two, let's see what we've got next. So, yeah, um, 
Shane called it. That's a good call. Right, um, so this is, Shane. yeah, this is my um, Seiko 7548. And this, like I, I told you guys when we were chatting before, I bought this watch in 1982. Um, and so my dad at the time had purchased a Pepsi uh, Rolex um, GMT. And so seeing that when this came out with the Pepsi bezel, um, I saw it at a local, um, it was actually an appliance store that sold jewelry also. And so I, I put it on layaway. Most people don't know what that is nowadays, but I put it on <laughs> 90 day layaway and um, at the end of the summer picked it up. So I, I remember going and making the last payment and having to wait for my dad to get home to go get the watch. And I was just like, you know, it was summertime. It was 530. He's like, I don't have time for it. But uh, he took me over <laughs> there and we did pick it up. And so, yeah, and I've um, it's beautiful. You can see in the picture there. It's absolutely stunning. Um, yeah, I did have a local watch. Too, yeah. yeah, I had a local watchmaker go completely through it. And he. I have all the original parts. I have the original bezel, the original crystal, the original handset. Um, but he did replace the handset, um, cleaned up the dial in the watch, and put the new bezel insert in it. The only difference you'll notice is the lollipop on the second hand is actually mm -hmm. on. It's on the wrong side, but it was a more modern hand that he updated it to. But yeah, something I'm, I'll never get rid of. It's uh, it's been through so many things in life. When you have a watch from 12 years old, as a matter of fact, I, I'm going to show you guys really quick here. I'll take this one off to show you, but my wrist. Um, is basically formed around that watch. <laughs> I mean, I have atrophy of the wrist from that watch. It's just kind of crazy. So it's just um, love, the, love the watch. So What's the size of it? It's about the same as an SKX. It comes okay. in right about 42 millimeters. Um, when you look at the cases side by side, there's just a few differences in the beveling mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, but yeah. Cool. That's one of my favorite things about watches is the – the way they follow you through life, you know, those giant moments, you, you buy an SKX with the money you saved up cutting lawns and then yeah. you wear it to your graduation and you pass it down to your kid 10 years later. It's really cool. I love that you took care of that and restored it and, and it's still a big part of your collection. Yeah, I was nervous. I'd get a lot of grief from, but but I think people understand that. Hey, if you if you grew up with the watch and you lived mm -hmm. everything that the watch went through, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to look that way. And um, this was when I when I started buying nicer watches and more modern watches. I said, you know what, I'm going to clean it up, and it's I, I wear it quite often, but it's kind of a safe queen. <laughs> it sits in the watch box mm -hmm. in the safe a lot of the time. So, yeah. All right. <clears throat> next up. See now, I almost this, picked that one. Um, this, yeah. is, this is maybe one of my favorite watches that I've seen you show. It's a great watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit on the channel, I really fell in love with that one. I, um, you know, German. It's a German timepiece. So Laco, the quality of what they make is just spectacular. And um, I had been looking at the Fliegers for quite a while and kind of tracking them. And um, actually, I bought this watch at LA Microlux in 2019. Um, the it was actually being sold by watch gang at the time they had a huge booth set up there um and so i went in and i was looking at the fliegers and my wife and actually um chad sagris who's one of the owners i think of watch gang were like hey but check this one out and um i just fell in love i the 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 sheen the dial if you guys don't know it it looks i mean it's just absolutely beautiful shiny um has tons of loom on it and then um, if you flip it over, it's running the ETA 6498, I do believe, which is a, a hand winder, um, mm -hmm. a, basically a pocket watch movement. And it's it's beautifully decorated. Um, so I should have sent you a picture of the, the backside of the watch also at the same time. But um, And yeah, my wife and I were down there. Um, we went to the show together and stayed at a, a really quaint little uh, hotel in Brentwood and had a nice dinner. And um, I remember it very well because it was, you know, before everything started happening and whatnot. And so, um, it's a watch that it, it has, uh, you know, my wife helped me pick it out. She appreciated what it, what it had to offer. And so, um, we, we kind of do that. Sometimes we're buying watches more as a family thing, not just me doing the watch thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got to get her opinion in there. Absolutely. It helps. <laughs> okay. Next up. Let's see. All right. Another Seiko diver. Yeah. And so this is obviously a modern one, but now becoming more and more of a classic um, with the SKX going away. Um, so <laughs> I think the reason I picked this one is because this is the third time I've owned this watch. Uh, I've <laughs> bought 
the 011J and sold it and bought it and sold it um, numerous times. And um, it's hard to own this watch being a Los Angeles Dodgers fan. It's really <laughs> hard. There's only certain can, times can, Don't I, wear it to the stadium. You'll get no, stabbed. No, but, I think I, yeah, exactly. I think I've gotten <laughs> mad dogged wearing it out you know, in public. But anyways, um, I love it. And um, I... Um, I'm a big fan of Clive Custler novels mm -hmm. and used to spend a lot of time reading them as kids. And if you guys mm -hmm. know um, Dirk Pitt, the main character in there, um, wore his orange dial Doxa. And uh, this was always kind of my, my working man's version of the, uh, the orange dial Doxa. I thought, hey, there's something out there any of us could get. Um, I mean, they're going crazy right now, the pricing of uh, <laughs> Let's go Giants. Nice. <laughs> I saw that come through. Yeah, right. <laughs> silence. Silence. No, but uh, it's uh, and, and it, I did put it on the, the factory Jubilee, which I know a lot of people. It's a jingly jangly thing, but I, I love it. It's super comfortable and I love the way the, uh, the factory Jubilee feels. But um, because I've bought and sold it that many times, this one's not leaving. And it, it's it is a favorite in my collection, truly. Nice. Yeah. All right, so I think there's one more. Is that right? Let's see. Okay, there it is. Yeah. All right. And uh, I got one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shane got two. That was that was really <laughs> impressive, actually. Yeah. Good guessing. So yeah, this. Um, and it's funny because you guys chose um, the two tutors that I. I sacrificed to get into this watch. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, okay. I, know yeah, that so, so I don't have those anymore. And um, <laughs> it's funny because I mentioned it, I think in a video, but I, I don't really remember when, but um, so I do work with um, a local watch uh, um, purveyor that, that gets some really amazing pieces in and he'll send me pictures. And over the last couple of years, I've had the opportunity to own the black dialed Explorer two, um, you know, just I've, I've had a lot of fun getting watches in. I've owned a Sea Dweller for a little bit of time and, and traded out. And I'd actually traded out of Rolexes. And I was really enjoying those tutors that you guys brought up. Um, but um, he sent me some pictures one night of this. And I've been tracking these new releases since they came out and just watching what was happening with them. And it's just that crazy stainless steel Rolex thing. Yeah. Um, but I also just something about what rolex did on these bigger models um i i fell in love with it i fell in love with the double batons at the three six and nine um the bigger case size i'm a i'm a unabashed fan of 40 and up as far as size goes um and just yeah it just it kind of happened so those this watches the 40, are 41 away. millimeter this is the 40 yeah this is the 124 300 so this was a uh, um October of 2020 purchase. Um, yeah, I actually picked it up from the second owner. It was a, a pre-owned watch okay. from the from the company, but yeah. So it's one of those things, and um, it it just it's the quintessential Rolex to me. Um, I see so many subs, and I see so many of the real flashy sports things that um, I just felt like this could be the Rolex that I finally said, okay, that's I'm good, I'm done. That's that's all I need. Um, but I did. I did come in this one over over retail, but not near what they're going for now. No. You know. So. But. Now, was the green? Was that like your your number one pick? You wanted the green out of all the different colors, or? You know what's funny is I actually like the black, and mm -hmm. I actually like the um, white, the silverish white dial. Um, but and those are amazingly well. <laughs> They're super expensive now, but compared yeah. to the colored dials, yeah. they haven't skyrocketed the same. Um, but when I saw this one, I, I like green dials. I've got a, a Nautis Avalon with a green dial that I love that watch. And it's just, I've always loved green dials on watches. And there's something about the Rolex green on a Rolex. And it just, um, I think when you guys were talking to Jody, he was talking about the Formula One thing and seeing the, um, the Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. And you just always see that mm. Rolex and that green. And this kind of just, to me, it said it all, you know, yeah. as far as. So, um, but yeah, and that was at Dodgers Stadium. Um, when I went, I, I'm not a groundskeeper there. Just so yeah, you know. it looks pretty empty there. <laughs> uh, but that's yeah, that's if you can get to a ball game before they open up totally, that's what you get to witness, which is kind of fun. Oh. Hmm. Nice. All right. Okay, so that's all five of them there. There's the there's the group together, 
And I think now we're going to get ready to play some more games. So chat, um, looking at the score, you guys are falling behind a little bit. Not as bad as me. I'm still at zero points. Shane's taking an early lead with two. Um, but we got a lot of a lot of got a long quiz way to games go. and stuff to go. I saw Jonathan's comment about the uh, beads of rice. That's probably a good idea. I should look for one of those for the SKX. That'd be a neat addition. Give it that Dirk Pitt vibe. Yeah. Get that off. All right. Okay, let's get into the game section. Let's do it. Shane, right. what do we got? So first up, we have the question phase. And this is where we're going to ask Aaron a number of questions that are all kind of based on the a number of questions, sorry, that are all based on the collection. Uh, but before he responds to those, we're going to try to guess what his answer is going to be. So, you know, each collect, each correct guess is going to be worth a point, and you guys join along in chat as we go through it. So, yeah, so let's... as the chat goes, so you guys will be spamming your answers. I'll try and we'll try and look at which one is the most popular answer out of the chat and we'll we'll assign that to your guys' answer. So, yeah. If you think you know the answer, use all caps. Go ahead and let it rip. We'll see what we got. All right. So, up first, do you have the questions up there? Yeah, I think we got the same ones as last time. Let's see. All right. All right. Otherwise, nice I might change them up start. as we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, out of the five watches, which is your favorite? Okay. Favorite one out of the five. Let me bring that back yeah. up again. Oh, wrong one. Hang on. Let's see. Okay. Out of these five. Okay, chat, let's see what you guys have got. A lot of votes for the SKX. Okay, so Seiko, Papa Gritch. We got two Seikos in here, so you're going to be a little bit more specific than that. This is a tough one. Yeah, okay. That is going to be a tough one. Somebody got something in there I can see. No, we got, let's see, a lot of guesses for... Seiko SKX, Seiko SKX, Pepsi, Rolex, Rolex, first Seiko, Davs, okay, saying the Giants. <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. Pepsi, Pepsi Arnie, okay, so that was Shane's guess. I don't think that one, man, Orient, Chris, Chris is saying Orient here. It seems like he might have some inside information. But it looks like the Seiko SKX is most popular with the chat. So I think we're going to lock the chat in for the SKX. Uh, okay. Let's see what the rest of us got. Let's go back over here. Oh, how do I turn this off? Oh, there All it is. Right. Okay. All right. What do you guys got? The very first Seiko. Yeah. Alton. Oyster yeah. Perpetual. Okay. Right. What's the okay. answer, Aaron? Well, it is the 7548. <sighs> Ah, okay. Okay. I told you, I told you guys I will never get rid of this watch. <laughs> it's not leaving the collection. I figured it was either I that one or the one the wa your wife gave you in case she was watching. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's a hey, good answer. Yeah. Going yeah. for sentimental there. There you go. So yeah, it's a and guess what? I, I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for this watch in nineteen eighty two, believe it or not. Oh wow. They were they were that expensive back then. So well. And still your favorite after all this time. Yeah. Yep. I was going with the theory that the latest watch was your favorite watch because I know that's my case. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love but, it. I love it. I absolutely love that watch. Um, but yeah, I think the history and the sentimental value, it's, it speaks centuries or decades, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That trumps it all. Yeah. All right. Next question. Right. So Let's next see what we question. Got up. See if you got the right one up. Is this right? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, you want to go with that one, or you got I'll a different do, one you want to do? I you haven't noticed one popped anything up. I'll just go with whatever, and if we'll pop up and see what comes up. Yeah, if you, so, if you want to throw a curveball, feel free. We can just. All right, out of the it. five watches you own, uh, if you had to pick one to put through like a G-Shock torture test. Which would it be? Okay, so that's not the question. Which is um, it, probably it, a hard one. Oh, don't tell us. Don't tell us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Gonna, yeah, we, we got to guess. Chat's got to guess. Okay. Can you throw up the uh, five watch? Number five. Okay, so if, if, he, if he had to put one of these through 
Yeah, through the works. Which one would it be? Ooh, that is a tough one. Okay. All right, chat. Go ahead and start spamming the answers. Uh, which one of these five? Oh, well, let me get it up. It's not even up. Okay, I can see it on my screen. Sorry, guys. I always do this. All <laughs> right. Which one of these five? Uh, yeah, would Aaron put through a torture test? So chat can bring that one up. Is it going to be his new Rolex Oyster Perpetual? Have that one run over by a car. Yeah, see how yeah that's a great idea. <laughs> Thrown in the freezer and then <laughs> smash with a hammer. Okay. Or laundry test. Yeah. yeah. Now, have you... Have, I guess maybe we'll, we don't want to get this in, but ha have any of these experienced a significant amount of torture other than your uh, your original Seiko that you restored? No. Any any horror stories that these guys have gone through that you, you know? No, not on these ones. Um, I have had a luxury watch horror story, so but not too, too bad. What was the luxury yeah, watch horror story? Yeah. I want to hear that. Um, that was actually probably the last time you guys saw me when I did the um, the video uh, in my car and I had the mustache and whatnot. But um, I uh, I dropped a, a Tudor um, Black Bay on my bathroom tile floor from a three feet up <laughs> about, about a week Ouch. after picking it up. Yeah, and so uh, and it it didn't cause any it it did do some cosmetic damage which was easily fixed, but it it knocked the second hand off and it was it was dragging on the minute hand as it went around so oh. something that took me a while to notice that hey it's losing like four minutes a day there's oh, something going on here yeah. <laughs> but it was actually with my watchmaker it was like a 50 dollars fix oh, <laughs> carcassian watchmaker in fresno i mean it's it was a mind-boggling yeah so he fixed awesome. it up for me that's awesome All right, so Looks yeah. like the chat is leaning heavily Aisle towards floor. the SKX, probably because of those Giants colors that people just can't stand <laughs> to see. Uh, yeah, but like a basketball. The Orient, the got a lot of people saying the Orient, that you go with that, but it looks like chat's, yeah, definitely heavily in favor of the SKX. So we'll lock you guys in for that. Uh, okay. Chat's going to go with the orange SKX. And let's see the rest of us. All right, what do you guys got? That's good. The Orient. All right. And what's it going to be, Aaron? All right, so I'm I'm gonna take a minute. Um, so the the Rolex, I would be stupid <laughs> to play basketball. Okay. With okay. The Rolex. okay, I wear this around the house. Um, I have taken it out to work and actually done field work with this watch on, but would never even consider it. You know, um, this watch, I just spent a few hundred dollars getting it restored. <laughs> Um, and I said it's a safe queen. So that watch is pretty much out. So that leaves that leaves um, the two others here that people chose. And you're, you're, where's the camera? There it is. So your first thought would be like, okay, he's not a Giants fan, so he'll basketball that one and, and keep the blue one. But the SKX is discontinued, and the prices are absolutely skyrocketing on these. Okay. So just from a pure value standpoint, and my wife's not going to watch this anyways. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you got to think an, about that. <laughs> I can get another one of these pretty quick. <laughs> okay. Right on. You yeah, demand. Right. right. So that, that's, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, it's so interesting. So when you pick your favorite, you go with your heart. But when you pick which one you got to destroy, you think with your wallet now all of a sudden. Right. Well, I, you know, that's smart, the way it works. Smart. Smart. <laughs> okay. All right. Next question. Um, why don't you tell me what you want, and I'll see if I have it on screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you had to pick one of these five watches to you know, kind of spread the word about it, I think more people need to know about one of these specific watches, which would it be? Okay. Um, that one. No, 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 yeah. no, not yet. Not yet. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we got to guess that. <laughs> okay. So, like chat, again, answering. yeah, I know. Let's see. You're gonna, this is more of a... <laughs> Yeah, we're in the game show section. Okay, gotcha. so chat, which uh, which watch of Aaron's five do you think is the one that he wants to spread the word about, let people know? Go ahead and start spamming that one. Let me bring those up again for you guys. So in case we already forgot. Uh, here we go. Okay, so which of these five does Aaron think needs more love? I think I know what I'm going to go with pretty quick because, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we got ours there, and chat is coming in. We got some early guesses for the Orient, Loco, Orient, Loco, Loco, Loco. Okay, Loco's pulling ahead now. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got some strong favorites here already going for the Loco. 
And I don't want to spoil anything, but I think you guys might be on to something also. All right, Alden Shane, you guys got your answers ready? Yep. Okay. Chat's gonna go Laco. I'm going Laco. 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 Everybody's saying Laco. Aaron. Laco. Um. You want my answer now? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and give us your answer. <laughs> okay. This is gonna be. I mean, um, this is a little different, but I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. The the watch that I've probably told the most people about over the years, and and when I'm talking to people and saying, hey, you know. This is why I like an automatic watch. This is what I like about the mechanical movement and this and that. M most people don't get that right off. I mean, we're we're weird guys. Just yeah. face that. We're we're, yeah. we're weird, and we we get that and understand that. But and to be able to do that, you know, I mean, a watch like the Laco is awesome because you can show them the case back and show them how the gears move and how everything works. But it's also prohibitive a bit in its pricing for that mm, particular sure. model in itself. Good point. Um, and it, maybe it's kind of like the torture test, the watch that I've told more people about um, as far as getting into watches that makes sense. is the Orient. And it's because, like I said, it's accessible to so many people out there. And not only that, we all know that, um, yeah, they may be cased in China or some, but they're in-house. And there's yeah. Seiko Epson Corporation. Japanese. Um, they're extremely well built. Um, my uncle, who's, uh, like I said, is an ex Navy pilot. I've actually had his Ben Roos from the 1970s on my channel that he actually had as a pilot's watch, but, um, he, he picked up one of these for himself. He bought one for his, um, his nephew. I mean, it's just been one of those things that it's, it's helped to push it through the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually recently picked his up over the summer. Um, because it be become magnetized and I had a friend of mine who has a demagnetizer fix it up for him and get it fixed up and running so but yeah I mean I'd be hard-pressed to not say this watch it's just I've told so many people about this brand and and I've pushed it it was really one of the things that when my channel started um, orients were at, at the you know forefront really mm. all right so threw all of us for a curveball there except my my very no. first mechanical was an orient it's They're a lot of people. Automatic, right? Yeah. 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 It's a lot of people. And it's interesting because they're, I mean, I, and I think that's been part of this internet world that we all have now and the accessibility of some of these things. Like, it, what, it, you know, Orient wasn't a brand you saw too much before, you know, 10 years ago or anything. Yeah. So. And it's because they've kind of become like the watch enthusiast's yeah. favorite budget brand because, <laughs> yeah, it's said accessibility. You can easily order one on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm tough to figure out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, in fact, so I got yeah. this one. Oh, FD, yeah. low scores so Review. far. Yeah, Defender. Nice. Oh, that's the Defender. I've always the loved that one. Yeah. Oh, I've loved that. The two is not quite as good as the one, I think. But well, okay. the movements, the movements, a huge upgrade for it. But it's it's such a good looking piece. It's yeah, it's just a classy looking piece. So yeah, everybody's pulling out our orients now. To watch it. <laughs> yeah. a couple line around here somewhere too. I've got, I've got, I've got, got another plenty. one back there, and <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah that, that was my first oh, mechanical, go. not nice. not quartz type watch. Yeah, excellent. Is that it's black, black or green one? It's black, and I've got an awesome rubber strap. That oh, looks cool. good. Is that a uh, Barton or? It looks like an Elite. Oh, Barton Elite. Fulmosa. Oh, oh, half the price one. of Barton. Which is and nice. Not half as bad, so that's good. Dave, where's your Orient? You don't have one nearby? He's got no, a few. Come on, buddy. No, it's in here. No, I'm not going to reach here. I'm just yeah, trying to figure out. I've got one of the new Orient somewhere. divers, like the kind of the Triton Juniors without the power reserve. I like this. That. This, I this is my Triton most system. accurate watch, too. It's only, I've, I've got an Eta that's plus one, and this one is just under minus one per day. They've always been very accurate movements from what I've found. Yeah. And I see Tuss watches is in the uh, chat. They actually yeah, are Orient big, dealer. Yeah, uh, so. big Orient fans there. <laughs> oh, nice. Not biased at all. No. Mm -hmm. hey. Free what it is. Yeah. If anybody's looking for Orients, you can go check them out. I think they got a pretty good selection there. Yeah. Nice. They've sent me a few things and given me some discounts and stuff. So give them a plug. What's the score? Are we? I think we got a couple more questions, but uh, looks like let me go ahead. And... Somebody was asking about the Helmen, oh, the right. Hamdalar monsters, and the Islander monsters. Oh, really? I still, 
Uh, I just put a review out on the Heim Dollar, so go check it out. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, um, I know there's so many out. They seem to be high quality. I know the Islander. I have a couple. Very cool. Yeah, the Heim Dollar I like because um, it's more of a second gen monster, and that was kind of my favorite, where it had like the really aggressive teeth on it. Mm -hmm. um, the Islanders look just as good, but I think they're more the third generation one, so it's a little toned sure. down. Um, but yeah, the Heim Dollar is just really good quality. So I mean, yeah. I, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, I've yeah, still I'm getting, got the steel uh, dive. Getting destroyed on the score right now. So, still, <laughs> yeah, still you're, you're not doing so well, man. Shane's holding on to his lead. Everybody else is keeping there it close, go. but yeah, it's not looking good for me. All right. So, next question. Um, if you had to pick just one watch to pass on to the next generation, whether it was like your kids or maybe a nephew, or, you know, which one would it be? So, think about it. All right. Let me get that up. Might be a tough one. Okay, so which one of these is Aaron passing on to the next generation? Go ahead and get that one up. Oh, that is a tough one. You got a lot of a lot of pieces with some good sentimental value there. Hmm. You know, and that's you know, it kind of depends. Like, right? You said you had two daughters. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so they might be fighting. You know, like if one of them gets the uh, gets the Seiko Quartz and the other one gets the Oyster Perpetual, there could be some fighting on their hands there. Right, right. <laughs> and I know both of them well enough to know who'd be going for the throat. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I got. I got to get. Got to get on here. Okay. All right. Let's see what the chat is doing. Okay, so Chad is taking the easy route. They're going with Rolex all over the place. Seems to be yeah, half Seiko. Rolex, half Seiko. Someone going with the Loco. Uh, Seiko, Pepsi, but yeah, it looks like that's close between the Seiko and the Rolex. Yeah, it is. I think uh, I think Rolex is getting a couple more votes. Yeah, but there you go. Sell the Rolex and buy two Orients for your daughters. <laughs> <laughs> you buy a lot then, then it's fair. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, I think. All right, let's let's lock the chat in for Rolex. I think that's slightly edging out the uh, the Seiko Pepsi, but anyway, that rest okay. you guys. What do you guys got? I'm going Rolex too. Rolex. Okay. I'm going to Seiko. Going sentimental here. Yeah. All right. Fool me now last you, time. Now you tell us. Yep. Um, super, super sentimental watch. I've had it, like I said, yeah. 12 years old. I'm not done, Elton. Oh, <laughs> oh no. dude. Okay. Dude. But, uh, but I got to say, um, this is an heirloom. All right. Uh, this, was a, this is an heirloom timepiece. And I, I have two daughters, and I would hope that one of them would um, – you know, at, at some point, appreciate Orology and what <laughs> what watches have to offer. And um, so, I I mean, honestly, this is an heirloom timepiece. Um, Absolutely. Rolex, they do these funny things of just continually getting more valuable. And, I, and I've seen it in my own family to where an $800 watch is worth a ridiculous amount of money nowadays. And so... I mean, and, and I don't, I wouldn't want to give it away as something that obviously would be sold off. Um, it would be something that somebody in the family is going to show that. And it, and it may not be one of my daughters. It may be a nephew. I have nephews. I have, but just somebody that shows that, that desire um, to really want to understand a little bit more about watches. You know, I, so if any of Aaron's relatives are watching right now, yeah. and you want to start getting into watches. I buttering them up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, I'll call you Uncle Aaron if you'll pass it on to me. <laughs> right. So yeah. So that that would definitely be the one that I would be passing on. So. All right. Okay. At least I'm on the board. Okay. Yeah. So we got two more yeah. questions. Um, next one up is kind of the what is the total value of the collection? Kind of MSRP. Um, don't tell us. So we're gonna have to guess it. And this is gonna be prices right rules. So, you know, closest without going over. So everybody, everybody make sure you go like later. 99 cents and, and your answer. <laughs> Got a couple of people in the chat want to be adopted or asking if your daughters are single. <laughs> <laughs> you can marry into the family. <laughs> watch, watch, watch it, guys. You're stepping on the flag there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so yeah, so Price is Right rules. Let's go. Let's see some dollar values in the chat, guys. Total value of this collection. Um, again, we said it's capped at 10, 10 grand, so we know that much. But uh, so this is a pretty interesting collection to price. You're like all over the place on ranges here. Okay. Okay. All right. I want to go over. So let's see. All right. I'm going to go. Let's pick a random number here. It's usually the best way. Okay. I got mine. So let's see what the chat's doing. Uh, all right. So we got 8,700, 7,200, 17,000. Uh, we've got 10, 10's the cap here. 8,250, 9,500, 75. Dabs is going right under that 10 grand at 9,700, 9,500, 1,000. So yeah, chat is all over the place. Yeah. You got a range on the low from in the 6,000s all the way up to right under that $10,000 mark. I loved prices right as a kid. This is so fun. I know. So yeah, we'll see. So let's <laughs> let's go with uh let's put the chat in at eighty two fifty. I think that's kind of in the middle of what you guys are suggesting. Yeah. So we'll lock you guys in at eighty two fifty is gonna be the chat answer. You guys can blame Chris Con Con Man for that one if he's right or wrong. <laughs> okay, or, or Wit wants to come in here at one dollar and lowball everybody. Okay, which is you know, price is right. That's a good guess, right? We could all go over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not a bad guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see what we got. Chad is going to go at 8250. It's kind of where I'm going. I'm going 7,872. 6,900. I'm going high. All right. It's going to be difficult to or calculate. All right, Aaron, what's uh, what's our answer? $9,800. Is... 9,800. Yeah. Okay. Who was high? Yeah. So chat was 8250. What did you guys get again? 89. Okay. I think that looks like Alden's getting that one then, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And yeah. And some of the watches, I mean, if you're not familiar with the price, you know, you may have guessed a little low on them. Um, yeah. But yeah. So it was right. that orange SKX that pushed, pushed it over, right? <laughs> I, you know what? I went off what I paid for it, not what they're mm. going for now. So I went off what I paid for, yeah, which is a little bit less. But yeah. All right. So. And the very last question, which is the wrist check question. So we got to try to guess what you have on your wrist, and then we'll show everybody else what we're wearing right now. Okay, so Aaron is wearing one of these five watches. Which one do you guys think it is? Go ahead and start jumping that to the chat. Now, he's shown a couple of them already, so unless he snuck it back on his wrist, there might have been some clues there. Yeah. I feel like an idiot because I wasn't paying attention yeah, at all. Yeah, he's probably think, flashed yeah. it a dozen yeah. times. I'm, I'm just uh, changing I'm it right quick. now. I'm <laughs> sneaky, I'm quick. Yeah, you never yeah. know what I'm doing, right? Or, uh, LFD. Uh, I don't think I've seen this one pop up. Okay, I'm going to go with that. All right, let's see what you guys got. So see how the chat, if there are any eagle eyes there. Uh, let's see. So Rolex, the Pepsi, Laco, Pepsi again. Dav said he saw, he saw you sneak the Rolex on there. <laughs> Laco, Rolex, Laco, Laco, Laco. Laco, Laco, Rolex. Yeah, yeah. See, I didn't. I don't think I've seen the Laco pop up either. So that's yeah, what I'm going for. That's what I'm thinking. What do you guys got? We'll lock the chat in for Laco. See if he. Okay. So everybody, <laughs> we think we think you got you figured out. You guys got okay, it. Okay. Oh, all right. We finally hey. got it. Okay. Okay. So that is that really a great one. Everybody got it right. It's, it's a beautiful watch. I, this is what I. I mean, I almost want to wear this watch backwards most yeah. of the time to show the to show that movement. And it does have a sapphire crystal in the back, so it's really warm when you wear it. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a beautiful watch, and has a little travel story with myself and the wife uh, going to a watch show. So what could be better than that, right? Yeah. yeah Dave's stuff. got a more budget friendly Laco in a similar vein. Yeah. That every time I see it, I think I want to buy one of those. Yeah. So the Laco they do their deck watches. So I got their budget deck watch, the, uh, mm -hmm. the Casablanca. It's one of my favorite watches. Mm -hmm. And is that a white dial actually, also? It's white dial, but black case, the one I got. Oh, and nice. actually, I, I got it because I couldn't afford to put down the money on the one that I saw on yours. So it was my substitute for that. 
I've seen you've done some of their fleegers, haven't you? Yeah, I've done a couple of their fleegers. Um, sure. They they loaned me in a couple for review, uh, so I looked at some of their higher end ones, and then yeah, I got one of their um, their budget ones too. So yeah, they're they're kind of cool because they have so much heritage, and they're one of the few original Flieger manufacturers that actually sell down in the affordable range again for under 500 bucks. That's what I was going to really say cool is they offer, they offer so much as far as their range goes. This is on their higher end, but yeah. you can get really nice. I mean, very well built watches and they're all in that same German quality. Yeah. So now we're going to transition out of the game aspect and we're going to spend a bit of time as the host talking about your collection, Aaron. So, I'd like to ask my fellow hosts, uh, maybe starting with Shane, what do you like about this collection? Uh, it's just very great, very varied, I guess if I can say that, collection. I mean, you kind of go from the really low end to the high end, as well as most of these pieces have a lot of sentimental value and a lot of stories. And I think to me, that's one of the greatest things about watch collecting is that it's not so much about the watch itself, but about kind of the memories that you build up as you go through life with them on your wrist. And you got almost a story for almost every piece here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like looking at these watches, it's almost like hearing like a timeline of, of your life and, and just different, um, yeah, different interests and different uh, experiences. And, you know, I, I love seeing, you know, like the, how the, the watch hobby has pulled in. You're at LA Microlux and picked up the Loco and, kind of working up to that Rolex Oyster Perpetual. And um, the conflict and yeah. with the, the Giants and just having that yeah, orange watch. Right? And, yeah, and bringing right. the sports into yeah. it too. So you got your, yeah, you got your rivals on your wrist there. Yeah. And yeah. As someone from San Diego, notice I'm not saying a thing about the Padres. I just ignore <laughs> them. <laughs> Please, Tessie Junior is killing me. Please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I also love the range here too. I mean, and this is, so... Yeah, so seeing, you know, going down to, yeah, a Seiko Quartz Diver all the way up to a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. And, um, yeah, seeing that it's not like, you know, you, you've only gravitated towards the luxury watches or you've completely spurned them. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting there to see that. I like that it demonstrates that you don't have to spend a grand to have a watch that you really enjoy, that you connect with. And, uh, but then, you know what, some people say... I hate Rolex. Rolex is a scam. And uh, obviously you've got a more balanced perspective <laughs> than that. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had at all kinds of different areas on the spectrum. And this demonstrates that well. So guys, if there was one watch here that you could pick that you get to take home, Aaron's going to gift it to you. Which <laughs> one, which one would it be? Oh, uh, well, yeah, all right, chat, you guys can go ahead and answer that one, too. We'll see what you guys think. But hey, what's for, your, uh, uh, Damianos, the answer is it's the ETA 6498. I, I saw that question pop up there. Yeah, that yeah. one pop yeah, right yeah. there. I'd probably go with the Laco. Um, yeah. I mean, the Rolex seems to be the obvious answer. Right. And I actually really do like that green, and I actually love it that it's a Rolex without Mercedes hands. Yeah. But there's something about the Laco I like better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the the Laco is my favorite watch out of this, out of, out of the the five. If you offered me any one of these watches, I would take the Rolex. <laughs> I like well, that. <laughs> Smart. Although we should put a stipulation that you have to keep it forever and you can't ever sell it. Then what do we? Uh, right? Okay, sure. I'll take the Rolex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've no, never I, been. I, like, the the Laco is my favorite of the design of everything. My heart would totally go with the Rolex or with the the Laco. Yeah, but I, I don't think I could pass the Rolex off if I if I had to if I had to pick. Yeah, <laughs> you're an honest I, man on video. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm I got to be honest. I never really loved the Oyster Perpetual, um, but these new colorways completely changed my mind on that, and I don't know why that is. It just to me it had kind of that old man vibe to it, but this freshens it up, and maybe I'm just not ready to have an old man Rolex on my wrist. Okay, I'm too poor to have a Rolex on my wrist, but uh, these new colorways are fantastic. So I would take that, e even even if they were all the same price. I just think that's a fantastic watch. The Tiffany Blue has skyrocketed. It's 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 insane where that watch is nowadays. Um, yeah, but I think I'm like I'm like you. It's it's such an exciting. Uh, it was like really a risk for. Um, I mean, for Rolex to take in late 2020 to come out with these just 
crazy colors. Um, I mean, the black, the white, okay. You know, the green is not that crazy because it's a Rolex color, but they, the coral red, the yellow, the Tiffany blue, it's just no. kind of wild. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they all wind up in like 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Yeah. It's, 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 like you know, or it's like, yeah. I think, I think it's really smart. This, everyone in lockdown, everyone's kind of down, depressed, and I think we're gravitating towards brighter, more colorful, more colorful, more hopeful things. And That's so Rolex, point. I don't know if Rolex was thinking about the, the global ethos due to COVID-19 lockdown, but to me, it fits the bill really well. They, they nailed it. Their marketing, obviously, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, I, I almost feel like they rolled the dice a little bit too with the sizing and there's a lot of controversy over the indices, the double batons, you know, at, at the positions. But for me, I, it was just the opposite for me. Those were the things that kind of like you said, were like, oh my gosh, they're finally making this OP that it, it has more of a sport vibe to it. It's not, it's not in their sport watch lineup, but it just, it really gave it that. Um, yeah, that, definitely that more sporty. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Right. So, gentlemen, um, is there something missing from this collection? Something you would add to it? I mean, like the first thought I had was like a true dress watch. I mean, the Laco, I think you could, that would be, well, I guess the Oyster Perpetual too. Yeah. Uh, either one of those would make a good, uh, good dress occasion. Um, they both yeah. slip under the cuff really well. Yeah. Maybe a chronograph would be kind of cool, especially since you lost that. Tudor uh, prints that you had in there. I miss my tutors, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> you got you got yeah yeah exactly. three three divers in there, so that would be yeah. But all, all of them, yeah. Maybe get rid of the giants and bring in a nice nice chronograph that you could pull in. Yeah, yeah. You'd say that, that or maybe field watch, very like kind yeah. of a classic looking field watch. But that's I'm a big field watch fan. Or a pilot's watch, maybe. Yep. Which what about the, the what about the chat? Bring the Add the glycine oh, airman. That reminds me, we forgot to do our own wrist checks. Oh yeah, yeah. What are you guys wearing? Are which, wearing? Oh, yeah. I'm wearing a glycine yeah, airman, which is why I thought about that. Nice. See, I love it's that watch. Good. I absolutely yeah. love that new glycine I picked yeah. up. Yeah, I mean, I have the base twenty-two. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. that's one. Which, that's it is Memorial Day weekend, so I figure this is the mm -hmm. most militaryish watch I own. Just for the I actually that. took mine off for the video, to be honest with you. And now that's the GL double zero zero seven one. Uh, I do not remember GL zero two zero five. Okay, that's I think the purest, maybe. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. it's it's the regular GMT. Oh, okay, nice. Kinda. Is your is yours a purest, Aaron? No, I it isn't. I think the. Uh, uh, the purest, it does it not have the GMT hand on it? it, it does, yeah, I think it uses the same movement, but it just doesn't have the GMT it's, hand. Yeah, on it's the 300 instead of the 330. Uh, yeah. Solita, it uses the 24 hour, like the main hand is a 24 hour yeah. power yeah. hand, I think, right? Yeah, I think they just swap them and leave yeah. one off or something. I think that was one of the reasons the purest, I think, looks better, but figured yeah. it has the functionality anyways. You might as well yeah, just might as well. Exactly. Have it. Yeah, that's the way I felt. Yeah. yeah. I'm also going with the GMT. I've got this, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a Citizen, uh, one of their oh, new nice. ones. It's a Citizen GMT ProMaster World Timer. So it's got a World Time bezel on it. Oh, so yeah, nice. for these things, I always wear a GMT or a World Time so I can keep track of where all you guys are. Is that an Eco, eco Drive? It is Eco Drive, yeah. Oh, nice. So it's it's one, I, I don't know if I've seen it in America. Um, it's like 200 bucks on Am Japanese Amazon. So I picked it up. It's a pretty good deal there. I don't know if you can see it. Focus it's a good looking watch too. Yeah, I like it. A lot of presence to it. I'm yeah. a fan for the silver dial or the silver bezel too. I love it. Yeah. Well, you'll like what I'm wearing then. I've got a Christopher Ward GMT. Oh, nice. oh, yeah. This is in your pictures. That's awesome. <laughs> I I know it's an older. I think it's kind of a more of an outgoing version. They just released a bunch of new more shiny versions of, of, well, it's a new case. They've come out with a smaller case, but I love it. I just, it wears so well. And because it takes inspiration from some old Rolexes, obviously yeah. it's a good looking watch. Very good looking watch. Yeah. And, and extremely try. well made for the money. Mm -hmm. Except it did have dust under the dial. So I did have to send it back after a week back to the UK, but it was gone for about a month and then came back to me. So, Oh, nice. 
they cleaned it up for you? Cleaned it up, and uh, they must have regulated it because it was running five seconds a day, and now it's running two. Oh, nice. So. Perfect. Can't complain about that. Nope, not at all. And now it's set to Dave's time in Japan. So I'll, I'll have to, I right. won't be able to, I won't have to ask you all the time, what time is it over there? <laughs> Perfect. As long as it doesn't wind down, right? You got to yeah. keep it going. Yeah. 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 I usually just ask Alexa back here. <laughs> well, it's, it's slave to the other one, isn't it? So if I adjust oh, yeah, it to yeah, my time, time. Yeah. it'll go right back to your time. Yeah. Perfect. All right. I think it is time for the final round. All right. So. Now we enter the final conundrum or the uh, trade-off phase. So how this is going to work is that, you know, before the show, we tried coming up with one single watch that we would offer Aaron and see if he would theoretically trade all five of his watches for that one specific watch. The trick with this is that he can only accept one of these trade offers, again, theoretically, and whoever is the winner there gets three points. So this can potentially decide the game, so to speak. And while we're presenting our offers, you guys in chat kind of throw out some offers of your own because if he doesn't like ours, you can go with one of yours. So who wants to go first? Yeah, so you guys got a chat, you guys got a $10,000 budget. Suggest a watch That's that you true. think yeah. Aaron might Has to take be. in place of all five of those watches. Hi here. Hypothetically, none of us can actually offer this, but yeah. we'll see which one he would guess. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess I got mine lined up, so I'll go first. Okay. Uh, this was a tough one. So I know you just bought a Rolex, and yeah. So I wanted to go a little bit different, which might not have been a great idea, but we'll see. So again, I saw that Oyster Prince coming up there a lot. Not Oyster, the uh, Tudor. So I went with this. Bring up the, uh, the new Zenith El Primero, the kind of Daytona-looking one. Uh, you can get that one right around 10 grand if you can find it. But yeah, so it's 41 millimeter case. Um, got that El Primero chronograph movement inside. I've always had kind of a soft spot for the El Primero if I was going to go up in that range. So I thought that would be kind of a cool one to add. So that's going to be my offer. I'll, uh, I'll throw that one up there as mine. Um, chat is bringing in a couple of good ones, which we'll, uh, we'll bring up there in a hmm. second. Uh, I'll throw up a couple of those, but let me bring up the next one. So I think next is Alton. There we go. Alton? So my guess is, I don't know, I think it's a little pedestrian, but that oh, wait, that is know. not my level of, of collection ability. So my knowledge at that price range Sorry. isn't great. So uh, I don't know. I threw at something that I liked in that price. The Rolex GMT Master. Duh. Sorry, was mine on the screen when I? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I lost it for a second. Got it. too many windows. Yeah. Okay, and then last one is Shane. You want to bring yours up. All right. Sweet. And this is worth right. two points, right, guys? Three. 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 So. Right. So. I'm kind of cheating here a little bit um, because I know oh. you like green watches. <laughs> and I was thinking, what's the most iconic green watch out there? And that's oh. a Hulk. But technically, I think they stopped making the Hulk. And oh. you probably have to, with a $10,000 $10, cap, I don't think you can actually get a Hulk <laughs> unless you're willing to give a kidney with it. But yeah. this is the, the new Kermit. The Kermit. Um, yeah. And technically, we're going off MSRP prices. And I don't think you could get this realistically for over under ten grand, but MSRP is under, so I'm going with the Kermit. Okay, I'm glad and you then, clarified that MSRP thing, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> you you needed to. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, yeah, I don't think you'd really get. Yeah. Well, if you want to wait for a couple of years on a waiting list, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you're on a, that's yeah. right. So yeah, you want so to bribe the, the you, authorized you dealer, the you the might. Rolex, you have it's to wait three MSRP. years before you get yeah, it. Sure, exactly. So you can take Shane's Rolex in three years from now for your five watches right now. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> okay, Maybe you don't yeah, want that the, the way chat, Rolex got, prices go up. You might not want that either. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got a lot of uh, lot guesses all over the place on the chat. So if you've seen any of the – just, just why don't you start a chat? Any, any of these chat answers that have come up, anything really um, – yeah, anything really doing it for you? 
any of these anyone hitting any good uh, uh i do i like chris wall uh mentions rgm um oh, chris. and uh, that's i mean if you guys i'm sure you guys are familiar with rgm watches but um Roland Murphy makes those handmade in Pennsylvania or him and his crew make those handmade in okay. Pennsylvania. It's amazing. So those are impressive pieces. RGM there. Okay. Yeah. I've never even heard of them actually. Yeah, um, like Te Teddy Baldessari just did a, a video on them and it was probably one of the better videos and, and really at the level that they should be shown. Um, uh, and, uh, he's, we were, I actually was back in Pennsylvania in 19 and got a tour. Um, Roland gave us a tour and Chris was actually there during the tour. And it was really uh, quite impressive what they're doing there. Are Rather they one American. of the, like the only real made in the USA kind of companies? Yeah. They're making a double tourbillon, an American made double tourbillon wow. here in the States. Wow. And if you have the money to get, you know, I did, and Roland was nice enough to let us actually hold some of the parts in our hand for these tourbillons that you know are handmade in the at the site there that sit in wow. cases for years until somebody actually orders one so absolutely amazing watches mm -hmm. all right so of the options that you've been throwing up why don't you walk through tell us which one would be your pick so we've got a uh kermit we've got mm. uh, alden's gmt master and then my zenith el primero are your three guesses from us or three offers from us and then the chat throwing out some interesting stuff too okay so you want to hear my answer yeah give yeah. us your answer okay so i am going to like you guys said with the msrp on rolexes um i'm going to not consider where you know what they go for on the on the gray mar aftermarket and stuff so the the zenith would be the the watch i would pick i know there's been a lot of controversy around that newer model um because of its resemblance to the daytona and people kind of having a little bit of heartburn over that but um given the history of zenith um and you know where they were when rolex started the daytona and they were there to make the movements for them i think it's a it's an amazing watch um, I've had a couple on the channel that I've been privileged to have on the channel, and they're they're absolutely amazing timepieces. They really are. So. Wow! Yeah. All yeah. Right. As soon as I saw yeah. that, I said, "Oh, that that's the one I'd go for." Yeah. yeah. Right that's off the hop. That, but there's something very interesting about your pick, and that's the fact that you just tied Dave with Shane. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. That's, now we got to uh, do some sort of tiebreaker. Swinging in there. Okay, so let me see if I can pull up those lightning round questions we did last time and see if that yeah. works any better. Uh, Break the tie. Yeah, let me see if we can pull that off. Or we just do rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, make it easier. There you go. Uh, I kind of enjoyed the lightning round last time. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah except we kept uh, answering. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see. So, okay. I'll see if we can see how we can do this. Okay. And pull this up. All right. So how this is going to work, Aaron, I'm going to throw out kind of a quick question. Me and Alton are going to pick our answers and the first one to break the tie. So first one to get one point is going to be the winner and we'll see how this goes. Okay. Well, so question, it's, you, it's you and Shane, not yeah, me and Shane. So me and Shane are going in it. Me and Shane are going head to head. Alton, you're kind of sitting there watching chat it's you guys can feel breaker. free to uh to try and play along we'll see how this goes it's gonna be the tiebreaker we'll see how many of these we can get through last time i think we went through like all 10 of the yeah. ones that i've had and still didn't break the tie all right so question number one so aaron i'm gonna throw the question out me and shane are gonna write our answers down and then we'll show our answers quickly and then you tell us what your answer is so the first question is tritium or loom which do you prefer tritium or loom Okay. Um, Not yet. Do. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> Shane, I got mine. You, go, you ready? One, yeah. two, three, go. I'm going with Loom. Oh, so we got it right here. Let's this might do it. it. This is it. He's going I'm, Loom. I'm a Loom guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I knew it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Dave comes from behind Not to win. Behind well done, buddy. Well there. done. All right. All right. Wow. Okay. Very good. You know what? Let's, uh, let me go ahead and just let me just wrap fire through these other ones just for fun and we'll throw those out and i think we're running low on time so after this we're probably not gonna have time for a q a today um but we'll 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 get some more info from you okay so in that line do you like bgw9 or c3 c3 
I like heavily applied green loom. I mean, that's just, okay. I'm old school. Um, Max Luma Brighton. Bright. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bracelets or straps? That's a really good question. Um, straps overall. Straps. Yeah, most of my stuff's on strap. Yeah, I think I would tend to go with that too. All right. What do you think about integrated bracelets? Yes or no? I see where they have their place, but I'm not a fan. You okay. know. What about NATO straps? I don't like them as much as I used to. Okay. <laughs> I used to really love them, and I'm, I'm not wearing as many nowadays. Yeah. So. All right. GMTs or chronographs? GMTs all day. Yeah. Right. I'm there with you. Okay. Swiss, Japanese, <laughs> or Chinese or manufacturers? <sighs> if I only had one to pick from, I would probably pick Japanese just because mm -hmm. of the range um, yep. of what's available out there from, you know, from Seiko. And uh, I mean, they, they just cover the spectrum. It's crazy. Yeah. And um, Yeah. You had a lot, yeah. of, a lot of Japanese watches in that. Five year pick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Micro brands or mainstream watches? Oh, man, you guys are hard. Um, <laughs> I work with so many micro brands and I love everything they have to offer, but a lot of, I mean, the mainstream brands, there's so much diversity yeah. and, and they can make them in numbers that can be fulfilled. Um, you know, they're not going to run out of stock or anything like that usually. So. <clears throat> Okay. Favorite price tier, affordable watches, mid-range watches, or luxury watches? Um, affordable all day. I've got, I've got so many affordable watches. This is my favorite. These are my five favorites. And guys, I have boxes and boxes of watches. Um, yeah, you're, you're a tough one to sort yeah. through trying to pick. Do you know how many watches you actually have? Yeah. <laughs> just just me or the ones that I count as my wife's watches? In the house. Yeah. Let's just say in the house. Because <laughs> I don't know how many I have right now. Oh. <laughs> Under 100. But Under more, okay. Yeah, but yeah. more than 60. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> let's say that. Let's say that. I find watches and I'm like, oh yeah, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, last question. You. Date or no date? That's a tough one too, because I've really just become a huge fan of three handers and, and no date, but I would have to say just for my tenure of wearing watches and stuff, I've always actually been a day date fan. I've always had, really? you know, okay. yeah. With, you know, Seiko's and whatnot. Yeah. I go with date all day, yeah. day, date, you know, I, for me, usually I can remember which day of the week it is. And that's just one more thing to set when I have to pick up a watch and set it. But sure. I, I got to have at least a date. I on think there. for me, it depends on how the day is presented. Like I'm not a huge fan of like how it is on some of the Seikos, but I like like the Hamilton khaki King where it's yeah, yeah, right like a 12 o'clock day. Yep. That's cool. Yep. That's neat. That stop is neat. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. So it looks like I managed to slip through and win at the very end there. So we yeah. have a, a yeah. kind of a punishment for but more importantly, losers who loses. Here. Right. <laughs> yeah. So let me see what we got here. It's me. Okay, so that's going to put me up to six points. And Alton in the chat, you guys fell down there at the end. Okay. So that's yeah. going to be Alton this time. So, Aaron, what we normally do is we have you uh, send me over an image that you would like Alton to post on his Instagram account. <laughs> he will post that. So, yeah. okay. Rain on that, you know, like a pink MVMT yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, uh, okay. <laughs> you can put a little caption on there as well. And Did, uh, rainbows and unicorns and just, yeah. just whatever. Oh. Technically, who lost? Who lost last awesome. time? I did. Uh, did you get a punishment from Jody? I did, yeah. I don't remember yeah. it. it was what was it? Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah, it was. I remember it, but I don't remember what it was. I know. He was. He was a little, little vicious there. <laughs> let's see if I. Can. I've got lots of time on my hands tomorrow, Alton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! That's on. Uh, it's just wonderful. All right. Was it the uh, self love? Yeah. Yeah. That was. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Classic. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. A little yeah. Fitbit looking thing. Was that oh, was, that's a fake Fitbit? Yeah. Or yeah. self lover, not self love. Self lover. Ooh, even, even better, Ooh. right? <laughs> that, 
You guys see that? I can't. Second only to the uh, first time watches on AliExpress. Oh boy, yeah. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was the one that he sent over. Great, uh, great. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, there was the this one from Miguel. It says, uh, "Who needs an Omega Speedmaster when you got this beauty?" And nice it's some stealth MVMT or something. Yeah, like yeah. four dollar Vincero, Vincero, yeah, oh. five dollar yeah. AliExpress watch sold for two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. So guys in the chat, you guys lost today. So when you see whatever Alton picks, you're gonna have to put it on your Instagram. Yes, well. is repost there. it. Don't leave them hanging out out there. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the show today. Thank you guys all for watching. And this was a lot of fun. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, any last words you have before we sign off? No, just, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I've enjoyed this so much. It's been really fun talking to you guys and thank you to everyone in the chat. Um, you know, thanks for watching us. Thanks for being out there and enjoying watches with all of us. It's, it's been wonderful. It's been fun. Yeah. And if any of you guys right are not subscribed to Aaron's channel, make sure you go over there. There's some links down in the description uh, to his channel. Again, I've been mm -hmm. watching it since before I started my mm -hmm. channel. One of the Damn. best ones out there. Um, also, Thank go subscribe guys. to Alton as well. Get him up I there. need 150 and more. Push him up 150. over 1,000 subscribers. So Do it. get him up there. And make sure you guys comment down below on maybe suggestions for other guests for future episodes. Yeah, if there's well. anybody you yeah. want to see on the show, uh, go ahead and drop some comments down below in the dis yeah in the comment section, and we'll see see if we can work that out. But that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Awesome. See you later. Right. Thanks, guys.